what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Okay, hey, this is your girl Kwame. But for those that can pronounce, can't pronounce my name, you can call me Q Kwame, the Queen. I am your girl, um, the CEO, founder, um, your host, um, creator of Pillow Talk with the T podcast. Tonight we have another amazing episode. Tonight. We are going to do some amazing, have amazing conversation, do some amazing discussions and some credible topics. We have the topic in tonight's show is called Don't Talk About It, Be About It. And we have some amazing people that's coming in the building and I see one already. Yes, let's get her in here. Yes, yes, yes. So, um, other than that, everyone knows to when you come in, make sure you um, you know participate, put your questions in, put your statements, your answers, your concerns, all that good stuff, all in. Um, and you're more you're more than welcome to end up being a part of this conversation because, as I always say, this platform is much as much as your platform as it is mine. Yes, how you doing, sweetie? Hey, I'm trying to get my iPad in the right direction. <laughs> Oh, you got to turn it around because it's sideways. Okay, I see my other guest is in the building. Yes, yes, yes. Come through. I might have to end up doing this from my phone. Yeah, probably because it's like, because you sideways. I sure hey. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I can't complain. That is good. Oh, yeah, she probably have to come. What she yeah, I think she probably had to go on her phone. She was on her iPad and it was sideways. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, well, so I'm excited. I know, oh. right? Tonight episode is gonna be amazing. It's gonna be dope. It's called Don't Talk About It, Be About It. I'm definitely one that's a like to be about it. I don't like to talk about it. And we're about to spill some tea and get deep into this conversation. But introduce yourself to the people. Let the people know who you are, uh, what you got going on, where you come from. <laughs> Ooh, child. Okay. Um, well, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Shaquan of Quantity Radio. I am from Stockton, California, small city in uh, California. I am 28 years old. I have my podcast going on. Um, we talk about everything from motivation, entrepreneurship, love, relationships, friendships. I'm, I'm giving you the tea on everything. Um, I'm, I'm just here. I'm excited to be a part of this podcast and I'm ready to see what the conversation is going to be about. <laughs> yes. That's what's up. That's what's up. And of course, um, you introduce yourself to the Pull Talk with the Team fam. Let the people know what you got going on, where you come from, and you know, get them some stuff, some good stuff, some goodies about who you are. And change for me so that's the latest thing that I'm doing um I host retreats uh I'm a product coach um I cook I cater I run a meal prep business you name it I got my hands in everything I enjoy being around people I enjoy meeting women um but my call is definitely in healing and accountability um everybody good to heal but the accountability part everybody not too uh don't like that part too much but it doesn't stop what has to be done, you know, it's part of growth. Um, so I'm a big traveler, I'm a foodie, I'm that person that try any food once. I'm going to try one time, I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it. I, I, I got to, I got to, I got to try one time. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, that's it. But I'm a, I'm a traveler, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, um, been with my husband 18 years, three girls, a grandson, you name it, man. I, I just, you know, I, I like to meet people, talk to people. 
um, very transparent, nothing hiding. I'm not bound by anything I'm talking about. Infidelity, miscarriages, molestation, you name it. I want to set the people free. That's who I am and that's what I do. Yes, absolutely. Listen, those are all the uncomfortable conversations that I feel like we all need to have that will allow us to grow. Mm -hmm. um, so tonight, we're definitely going to have an uncomfortable conversation. And tonight's show, again, is called Don't Talk About It, Be About It. And basically, this phrase, I always grew up basically saying, don't talk about it, be about it. And as I got older, I continue keeping that in my head. I never really, I haven't really said it as much as I used to when I was younger. I say, I said it in my head because I don't talk about anything that I do or want to do. What I is, what I do is I show forth action. Um, I don't talk about anything I have coming up. I don't have, I don't do it. I basically be about it. Um, so basically for anyone that's tuning in, um, the show is called Don't Talk About It, Be About It, which it means don't say what you are going to do or how you are. Some um, show people with your actions. And how do you guys end up showing up when it comes, um, don't talk about it, be about it. Are you guys more of talking about what you want to do and in the fields of them doing it? Or are you more like me, the street? got that game, that game plan, got that blueprint, doing it, and then when it dropped, that's when they see it. Oh, so uh, let me go ahead and say, I, I'll talk about it. I'm not going to lie. I will talk about it because I got to, it's for myself, though. I really try to talk myself into, like, girl, we're going to do this. I'm going to get this done. I got a list out. I'm telling people about it. I don't really, only my close circle, I'll tell somebody, like, what I'm doing because I'm so excited about doing it. Or, you know, I really have, like, a passion about what I'm about to do. And I'll talk about it. And then I'm like, okay, let me put this into work. And then I'll do it. I'm, I kind of have, I don't know if that's a problem. Or not, because sometimes I feel like I do just need to like just show up and just do it just behind the scenes and just drop it, like you said, and just put it out to everybody and put my work out there. But sometimes I'm like, oh, like I need some help I, or I need to have a conversation with somebody about this. So I do talk about it first and then I'm definitely going to be about it, even though if it may take me a little bit of time, um, I'm definitely going to be about it. I'm, I'm a talker. And I'm gonna be about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm a little bit of both. I do it. I talk about it mainly for a, an accountability standpoint. Because if somebody else knows, then if I'm slacking, like when I was launching the A Club, I talked about it, and then for a while I was BSing, and my friend was like, she was like actually getting on my nerves. Y'all not gonna lie. Every day she was like, "What did you do? Did you do your email list? What's going on?" What's, and I was like, "Oh my God, I'm a choker." But the reality <laughs> is I needed that because I was, I was dragging on it. So for me, the talking for me is about holding me accountable. People, I am that person for everybody. So people don't think that I need it in certain areas. So when I talk about something, I'm definitely doing it for a purpose. I need people to remind me, put that back in my face because sometimes I'll be working on something else. I mess up, I put it down. Whatever. So for me, I'm a little bit of both, but I, I definitely got no problem coming out just like boom. And they'd be like, okay, where'd that come from? She ain't mentioned that. She just mm -hmm. busted up and did this new pump. Like, what happened? So I, 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 I like both, but I'm like, I'm, I'm like uh, her. I'm, I'm such a talker. So it's like I can't help myself but to just talk. And it's not to talk to, it's just because it's who I am. I don't know. I just talk. I'm always talking about what's going on, what's coming up. Um, you know, you just never know who has ideas for what you're doing. So sometimes talking about it can be beneficial. They may have a connection you don't have, whatever the case may be. So I'm definitely, uh, definitely for it. If it's something extremely private um, or something more personal, then definitely. Yeah, you got to be careful with that. People are weird. I'm going to use the word weird for other words. I'm just use weird. People are weird. So some things, yeah, you definitely got to keep closer to you. But for the most part, yeah, I'm definitely a little bit of both. Definitely a little bit more. Okay, so see, I'm I'm with what um just small talk just said. I'm the type of person where I'm not. I don't really like. I say I don't talk about it. Why? Because of that right there. Mm -hmm. Um, people will pray and not p a r y p r e y mm -hmm. on your endeavors because you'll think that they happy for you they you think that they are joyful for you you think they sitting there so genuinely really 
truly give a fuck or really care about what you really doing when I feel like people could smile in your face but you don't know what they could be saying in their head you don't know what they could be saying behind their back or anything when they're not in front of your face it could be actually you know p-r-e-y on the things you know on you and things you have going on and that's the reason why I don't share I don't share because I guess also because of my previous past um, and then also the fact that it's not that, but just the fact is like, I'd rather just show you and hit you with a mic drop than you ever knowing anything. Like me, like it's just me and my son. My son half of the time don't even know what I'm doing until it drops and he be like, where did that come from? <laughs> so, and it's not to say that he would, you know, be mischievous about it. It's just the fact that's just how my operation of my mindset works mm -hmm. and again people are crazy to the fact is that you constantly talk about it talk about it talk about it and nowadays me being in this podcast industry and um my sister probably can relate to this too because she in the podcast community too you talk about it so much to the fact that people are still your shit so and you again. <laughs> say that so you, so you just have to be really careful because, again, everything we do in this world is duplicatable. However, the difference about the duplication is that it will, it, um, everybody going to have different ingredients. Right. So at the end of the day, anybody could do what we're doing and everybody could do whatever. But the thing is, the ingredients of the duplication is completely going to be different. And my thing is, it's just, I feel like it just should be very careful when doing that. And if you got a, a close knit circle that you trust to talk about it and to discuss and keep mentioning it because you feel like you need to say it for yourself and you need to speak out loud for yourself, then cool. Absolutely freaking lutely. But if you don't have that, just be very careful. I have to warn people with that because you could still be in the journey and emotion of doing your stuff. And then by the time you know, just like just small talk say, and instead of collaborating, people still and call it theirs. That's true. That is true. That's very true. You have to be careful what you say to certain people. It's okay to share certain ideas. Like you said, being in the podcast industry, if I want to share ideas with a fellow podcaster, I might not tell them everything that I'm about to do, but I wouldn't mind sharing certain information that maybe could help them grow as well. And I don't mind them taking that idea from me and running with it because, you know, that will fix you. That That's good for you. But when it comes to something like I'm really passionate about, like, okay, I want to do this. I want to have this on my show. I'm going to have this segment on my show. And I'm like, okay, well, let me go and, you know, get this too. And then not even, if you don't have that integrity, they're like, you know what? I like that. Can I use that? And be sneaky and go behind somebody's back and to take their ideas. That's, you don't need that person in your circle and your corner at all. Like you said, you got to have that small, knit circle of your friends that you can tell something to and trust them trust is everything and mm -hmm. also like you have to have accountability that's why I, when she said that about having accountability that's why you talk about it that's for me I definitely need accountability like you know you slacking like you said you was gonna do this and you done got distracted you done you know it's been two three weeks you got this going on like what do you have going on for this I'm like okay wait Thank you for getting me back on my track because I done fell off a little bit. I need that push sometimes. So mm -hmm. you do definitely have to talk about it with certain people. It's just how you, I mean, what you say and who you say it to. Okay. You got to know, you got to know who to say what yeah. to because that will definitely um, throw you off and somebody could steal your ideas. It's just a whole thing. Like you, you got to know what you're doing and how you're doing to go about it. Right, right. And it's, it comes down to details, too, because you can talk about something without going into complete details. You don't have to tell time frame when you're going to launch, who it's going to be. But, you know, it is also about, and like she said, the people that are around you as well. Uh, but what people don't understand is what God has for you is for you. It don't mm -hmm. matter what you try to put on it. We can make the, I can give you the ingredients for a season and I'm going to make it is not going to turn off the same. It may not be your season to make that seasoning, but it makes yeah. money. I may become a millionaire off of it, and you probably make it $100. So 
even for the people, I'm shaming the people that steal. Because if it's not your season, it's not going to work for you. And people need to understand that all this stealing and trying to copycat, if it's not for you, it's not going to work anyway. It's going to be very short-lived. You're not going to even have the same passion I have behind it. So you're going to have to do something because you're stealing it. You don't have the same fire behind it. You don't, that's not your baby. That's my baby. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you tried to come and snatch it, it's not going to go well for you anyway. And that be the main people that when they birth something, then they pissed off that somebody stole something from them. But that's something that you did before as well. So you got to be careful with all of that stuff. But I, I mean, I, I definitely can agree with it on both sides. I just believe in sharing. It's not necessarily uh, uh, appropriate to give every detail. We have to be careful. Exactly. Not like, You don't have to overshare. I believe you can say something very vaguely and not give every single detail. Not tell everything you're going to wear. How you're going to do You know, you don't have to do all of that. You know, if you're going to do a wedding and you say your color's going to be purple and white, you don't have to say what color the bridesmaids wear, what the mother the bride. Don't give all the detail. You be vague. If they want to come, then let them go do whatever they want to do. But again, what's, what's for you, what's for, this for you? People can't stop it. Okay, Absolutely. I definitely agree. It's just the fact that I feel like we'll have it working for me this this time. I just feel like I'm going to keep doing it. Because I also, I also feel like this too. It's that people talk about it because they procrastinate. Mm. That's true. Yeah. So, and I would, and listen, I'm the friend, listen, I'm the friend, I'm the sister, I'm the auntie, I'm the first cousin, I'm the first daughter, first granddaughter, and any of my siblings or cousins come to me and they keep talking, 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 I'll be like, listen, what the fuck is you doing? Like, stop, I don't, like, I don't want to keep hearing over and over and over. Because just like you say, Angie, your friend was like, Angie, you keep talking about it. What have you done? Like, was on my neck. You hear me? <laughs> and that's me. I'm like, oh, I don't want to hear no more. I need, to, I need to see some visuals. Like, I need to see some visuals. <laughs> you need that. You need that, definitely. Right? 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 And you know what's funny? I wasn't even talking about it no more. That's why she was on me. She was like, the fact that you haven't mentioned it tells me that you put it down. So she was on, girl, she was on my neck. I'm not, I ain't lying to y'all. I was, I was low-key mad at my friend. I was like, look, y'all, if you call me one more day and ask me what I did, <laughs> but I needed that because I, again, that is a, that is something that I'll do. I'll put it down for a second. And then, you know, so she was on my head and I, I was able to launch it and I am thankful for that. Um, so, yeah, you, you're right. So the talking thing, you know, sometimes people do stuff for attention, though. The type of people that you saw, like, you talking about, just be one the, they, they want people to be all, I don't know, just be talking, talking, and they got no action. They launched to nothing. But sometimes mm -hmm. just doing it to talk. So mm -hmm. I think it's a huge difference with people like that. Some people just like to hear themselves talk. Some people want to see what you think about their idea. So they'll kind of throw something out there to get a feel for it. Is it, you know, want to see what kind of bite they get, so yeah. to speak. But again, if you fed this thing and you, this your baby, you go for it. It don't matter what kind of bite. That might not be your audience. You got to do what you got to do. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Listen. And then that's, that's another thing with people that do stuff like that for attention. I don't mess with those type of people either. Mm hmm <laughs> Yeah, because at the end of the day, come on now, like, you, you talking about it, you talking about it, you talking about right. it, where's the action? Are you just, right. like you say, you talking to hear yourself talk? Mm -hmm. You trying to see what I'm going to think? It's about what you want to do. If you really want to do it, all this talking at the end of the day, you're going to put your foot down and put some action behind those words because mm -hmm. you're passionate about it. You know, I'm just trying to see what you think or just trying to put it out there to make it seem to everyone else that you're doing something and that you're about something. And maybe you have an insecurity, maybe with that too. Like, you know, I'm gonna just talk about it. You know, other people, other people are doing things. Let me talk about what I'm going to do so I don't feel left out. So I don't look like I'm not doing anything. But at the end of the day, if we don't see no action behind it, we, we see that anyway. It's like, okay, they was just talking. They're not really about what they say they're about. You gotta, you gotta be about your, your shit at the end of the day. Right. 
Yeah. Just like that. Okay, so I know I, I you already know I'm a research Google queen. So I had just Googled about it. It said, what does the quote, don't talk about it, be about it mean? So they have five answers. So basically it said, it means if you're going to talk about something or have an opinion, then you should act on your thoughts and feelings. If you can talk the talk, then walk the walk is another way of saying this quote. And I feel I feel exactly as that. Like my thing is to me, it's like say it once. Now take take the um say it once. Now take the measures of seeing what you need to do. Now the research. Now for the research, after you get the research, now it's time to take course of action once you get to get to see what needs to be done. But if I feel like feel like you ain't doing that. I'm like, I'm sorry. Don't come back talking to me about this again. To you, until I see see that you actually have at least two stages done. Because again, we I feel like people that talk about it is procrastination, and those are people that sit there that 10, 20, 30 years go by. They look behind and say, "Where did my life go?" And this is something I tell my son now, and he just turned 21 in January, and I tell my son, I say, listen, you on a good start. However, I do want you to do just a little bit more because I don't want you to sit there, turn around, either regret some things that you may have not done, or either turn around and say, hey, where did my life go? I could have had done this, 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 that, and the third. You know, and that's the worst feeling that an individual could feel because now you're 40 years old. You can't turn back hands in time. You won't be feeling some type of way, feeling like you missed something, feeling like you didn't conquer something. And that's like the worst feeling. Yes, I would that's guys true. I agree. I mean, because, but you know what? It's not even, we call it procrastination because that's the first thing that comes to mind, but it's actually fear. It's a mm -hmm. fear that stops you mm. from going forward. It's a lack of belief. It's a lack of support um, sometimes. And people are just afraid. They are afraid to jump out there. That procrastination is rooted in fear. What if? Oh, my God. What if this don't go right? People are afraid to take risks, but they forget that most successful people have failed over and over and over. Milton Hershey, the guy that produced the Hershey boys, we all know Hershey, that recipe bombed a thousand times, seriously. Because back in the day, sugar was too expensive. He jacked that thing up so many times before he got it right. But he did not quit. He knew that he, he had to get this thing. He knew it was his baby, like we just talked about earlier. So there are a thousand different candy boys out there, but it's one Hershey. So at the end of the day, again, what is for you is for you, but people, it's a fear. It's not even a procrastination. It is a gut-wrenching fear. And that's the thing people don't like to talk about. It's like, oh, I ain't scared of nothing. But you are. You won't take this leap. Your faith is not there. It scares you. You are venturing into the unknown. Entrepreneurship can be scary. Launching a podcast can be scary. You're wondering about viewers. Is this going to do this? Is this going to hit the mark? Am I going to track? It is all those thoughts go into these things. But the thing is, you're not going to know until you do it. You can what if yourself to death, but you have to say, you know what, I'm going to go through it. What, what, you know, I, this is how I had it in my mind, whatever, whatever. Sometimes I think people believe that numbers mean significance. Huh. You can have a whole bunch That's of true. people, but nobody support, actually supports you. So they, they're present for all it is. They're present for your podcast, they're present for this, but would they come up if you showed up live? Would they come if you did a movie, if you wrote a book? Would they buy? So they can sit there and spectate, but how many people are really there to support? So the numbers have no significance whatsoever. That does not mean that you are not successful. And I think people get caught up in that. Oh, I launched this thing and only two people came. Oh my God, I'm going to quit. Wow. You got to yeah. start somewhere. So it's yeah. a fear. It is a fear. That's really what that's rooted in. It's a fear. I can mm. um, definitely piggyback on that because I've struggled with that, still overcoming that struggle. Because um, <clears throat> I'm like, okay, why am I procrastinating? Why am I holding back? I have all these ideas in my head, what I can do, where I want to put out. 
but at the end of the day, it's a fear. How are people going to receive me? How are people going to judge me? How are people going to feel about this? But I can't worry about that. If it's something that I want to do, I got to do it because I want to do it and not because of what everybody else thinks or what the, how they're going to look at me. You can't let that stop you at the end of the day because if you're doing it because you care about it, that's all that matters. Yeah. If, you get, if you get love from what you do, good. If you get hate from what you do, that's okay because that comes with the territory. Mm -hmm. So you have to be comfortable. You have to, it comes with being comfortable with your own self and believing in yourself. Like you said, you have to believe in yourself. And so I'm slowly overcoming that struggle. I said, you know what? Why am I holding myself back? I'm going to do what I want to do. And I'm going to put it out there. I said, you know what? No more bullshitting, no more procrastinating. I'm putting this out. That's the next month. Like, for example, next month, I'm going hard in the paint. I'm, I'm bringing on guests. I'm, I'm talking about different topics that people wouldn't expect me to talk about. It's because I want to do it. So exactly. people going to tune in to hear what you're saying anyway. So you're still going to get them views. It don't matter about the numbers at the end of the day. You spoke what you needed to spoke and you released that off your chest, off your conscience, what right. you wanted to do and your opinion. That's all that matters. And I can, I can really tell you about that because I'm telling you, I'm overcoming that struggle right now. But you have to put that fear aside and live for you. Because like you yeah. said, and, and a lot of people talk about it and, and don't be about it. And then they'll see somebody else doing it and they'll now want to hop on it like, oh my God, because I had this idea and now I look and someone else is doing it. Now you think somebody stole your idea. They ain't, I ain't even talking, I ain't did nothing. But now you feel bad because you could have did that. You yeah. held yourself back. When you hold yourself back and you realize that, like it's a worse feeling. Like, damn, I should have did that. Or what if I would have did that? Do it. I'm here right. to tell you, just do it. Please go right forward with whatever you're passionate about you want to do just do it please yeah that's just like even what angel said about people sitting there thinking that numbers or feeling believing that numbers are significant and in the podcast community we definitely see that a lot of people are stuck on numbers and i um tell people like this is my passion not my hobby because at the end of the day we, I believe we all started with just like one or two people probably just watching our, was listening and watching our show and then it ended up growing. And my thing is, I tell people, you know how many people sit there and probably went on live and was like just talking to their damn selves and then that actually eventually grew? You know, right. it's like, because at the end of the day, you may not have somebody watching now, but there's always a rewatch and there's people watching later that couldn't watch at that time. And then you receive, you send in a message that was given to you to send out to the universe. And my thing is you could, and then I see so many people be like, well, I have seven, I have 172 episodes or I have 570 episodes. Yeah, you could have all those, but are those each and every of those 172 to 500 episodes, are those substance episodes? Or are they just some bullshit you just put out? Because you got to remember that all your episodes ain't going to gravitate to everybody and it may not end up hiking up to where you want it to get. Because at the end of the day, just like you had said, if I really cared about what people really thought about my topics, about my episodes, I probably wouldn't be doing this, mm -hmm. honestly. And, right. and I didn't want to do this. I had, I had my, my village around me who said that Q you need to start something like a talk show or podcast or something because there's some there's people out there that need a you in their life and mm -hmm. I, I listen I procrastinated this shit because like two years went by I was like I don't know what y'all talking about these people ain't ready for me <laughs> they weren't ready for you <laughs> they not ready for me. Cause this going. I say I'm, I'm gonna be probably getting in a fight with somebody every every week on this motherfucker. I'm somebody gonna say something wrong, and I'm gonna want to pull up. Like <laughs> it's like like because you know, and, and I told my family. I'm saying y'all know how transparent that I am. I say half of y'all not ready for what I'll be about to say. So what make you mm -hmm. think we're all gonna be ready about what I'm about to say? Mm -hmm. So they was like, well. You know, just think about it. Da, da, da. Two years went by. I thought about it. And it still was, you, you know how you get that flame in your belly that, mm -hmm. that, that won't go away. And I kept mm -hmm. having this, un, this consistent flame that kept burning. And I'm like, what the hell is this? 
And two years later, I remember getting around with my family again. And once somebody said, did you start that podcast yet? And it's like, as soon as she said that, that's the flame was like, ding, 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 ding. And I was like, oh, my God, are you telling me this is what the burning belly flame is feeling like because of the podcast? <laughs> Yep. So, but before I even came, I say, listen, I'm going to have to pray, I'm going to have to fast, and I'm going to have to meditate. And so I constantly, consistently do that before every epi- before every season. Those are my traditions. Because my thing is, I don't care what, how anybody feels about what I, I need to say, because you got to realize, especially people in our community, they are going to feel some type of way, especially if it's an uncomfortable truth. They're going to sit there and they're not going to want to hear it if it's an uncomfortable truth. Our people are the hardest people to want and to see and to move with change. Mm-hmm. We know, we know that. Right. So I said, listen, I, I need to get thicker skin than I already have. I need to get that grandfather, my grandfather's skin because that, that was a bad <laughs> man. I was a bad man, but yeah, he ain't playing no games. He ain't care. So I said, I need to, I need to channel him I need to make sure I fast, meditate, and pray, and I need to make sure that I go out here knowing the fact that I'm about to talk about this big-ass pink elephant in the middle of the room, and we are no longer sweeping shit under the rug. And since then, now four seasons later, I'm continuing to do that. And the thing is, I can think that people respect that. Mm -hmm. That because I'm here and prepped myself to be ready for whatever of anything to come, come my way. But I can really sit there and say the feedback, the intake, even the other people, other, other podcasters, they can respect that. And I respect mm-hmm. that they respect that mm-hmm. because we need to talk about it. Mm-hmm. We would spread mm-hmm. that realness. Like if nobody else is going to talk about it, I'm going to talk about it. That's you. Mm-hmm. Like I'm coming with these different topics. I don't care whoever feels comfortable. This ain't for you. You can go watch right. somebody else. You can go listen to somebody else's podcast, but I'm going to talk about this. And the mm-hmm. real going to respect that, the honesty, the authenticity, all of that, we yeah. gotta respect that because what everybody else is sweeping under the rug, you bringing it to the light because yeah. somebody may need to hear that. You have an audience that needs to hear that. Somebody needs to hear that word that day, and you yeah. help somebody else out. So that's you gotta look at the bigger picture. You that's help true. somebody else out, and that's what that's what counts. That's what matters. That's, that's true. About. It's authenticity. People, we are people are drawn to. True. Even though they get agitated by people that tell the truth, even even though people walk around and say, keep it real, tell me, tell me. But a lot of times they get offended by the truth, but they are watching people. And again, there are certain people called to our voices to, to do what we do. It's not always about the masses. Sometimes it may only be for the 10. Maybe it's for the 100. Maybe it's for the one connected to the 100. So a lot of times we, you just got to be you. You just got to flow. So when I first started talking, I used to be bound by a lot of stuff. I, I, I grew up in a traditional household, so to speak, a two-parent household. But at the end of the day, my parents did not like each other. However, my sister mm. was like, oh, my parents are still together after 30 years. And, you know, they used to burn me up because I'm like, girl, they don't even like each other. But for the longest, I couldn't say that because it was like, here she go, always talking too much doing this, doing that, but they didn't realize what they were creating. They were teaching me to manipulate, teaching me to lie, teaching me to fake it till I make mm. it. I hate that phrase. I don't want to fake nothing. I don't want to talk about things that I don't really have. I want to be able to speak and, and speak real. I want to be authentic. If I'm struggling somewhere, I want to be able to say that. I don't want to always look like I'm put together. People can't relate to somebody like that. If, when, when I deal with my clients, one thing, any if my clients ever choose to be open about it because it's confidential they don't have to but when we talk i don't hide behind my education these levels behind my name and you know hide that i'm a real person they know my struggles they need to be able to relate to me why am i choosing you as a coach if you just gonna give me answers you ain't been through nothing i have to let these people know baby the devil is a liar angel didn't been through it angel didn't been tormented in my mind angel didn't ended up behind an abandoned jewelry store screaming in her car because she had too much pride, she wanted to tell people what she was going through. Angel didn't survive it for them. Who, who hasn't been through that? Yes, I have. And I have to talk about those things because I need people to know that you can heal from it. Yes. I cannot be sitting here hiding, pretending that everything is put together. 
I need you to know I got broken apart. I didn't got cheated on. I didn't got busted upside my head. I didn't do these crazy things, and I had to heal. I had to take mm. accountability for where I was. I had to grow. I had to mature. So it, people are attracted to authenticity. So when I started telling my story that I grew up in an emotionally broken home, not broken because my parents were married, but emotionally broken, that was pissing me off. My mom was like, you really feel the way to talk about? Yes, ma'am. I'm coming out of this. You can do that. But Angel cannot. Where I'm going, there are people called to my work, and I can't hide. I need to let people know what this felt like growing up in this house. Yes, I am going to talk about it because I carried that stuff in my life. I emotionally abandoned my oldest daughter because I didn't have it. That child needed an explanation. Mama, what is what is it like this? I had to start talking about that stuff to heal, to grow. This this, this was a real journey. So people are attracted to authenticity. It is not always popular, but no. I'm going to be who I am. Not for you, not for her, not, and it's not anything against you, but what's going to stay clear is my heart. What's going to mm -hmm. stay wrinkle-free is my face because I'm not going to be stressed. Yes. So I'm going to tell the truth, and yes. it's not about embarrassing anybody. It's about freeing me, keeping my work clear so God can hear my prayers Keep it forgiving these people that don't know what they're doing and keeping it moving. So authenticity is important. It's not always popular. The truth is bitter. Yeah, it's okay. bitter, but it's necessary. So the right people are going to be drawn to your voice and they're going to appreciate what you both are doing. Be authentic. You don't have to be what the people want to be, who the world wants to see. Be who you want to be. Be mm. who you are. Be authentic, and he is going to draw the right crowd. Period. Yes, absolutely, yes. absolutely. You said it well said for real. Mm -hmm. And 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 that's the and that's the thing. Um, that I feel like nowadays a lot of people are having a problem with doing is being authentic and being themselves. You know, and I seen this. Because Instagram and YouTube is completely two different worlds. I, I, I know mm -hmm. you've seen that already. <laughs> and I just feel like a lot of people on YouTube, they end up say they be authentic, but they completely live in a whole different world. And it's like, how? So when the camera come on, you this whole different person. And when the camera off, you this other person. So it's like, so are, who are you? And then not only that, you got to be someone else to the fact that makes me question, is your real life, is that unhappy? Because mm -hmm. I, I, just, I just can't be able to do it. It's like, as, we, as people, especially people in the black and brown community, we, we've been, we've been, Holding it, going it through with pain, suffering, the mask, and swallow our tongue, and can't say shit, be in with change. And now it's a fact of freedom you to end up now being who you should want to be or who it is that you truly is destined to be. And the part that comes to me, heal that. So you can be the best version of yourself. Right. That's right. But, but the thing is, I understand since the past three years, a lot of people, we especially our community, we've been talking about the fact of therapy, right? Mm -hmm. And people going to therapy. But my thing is, and I think it's being talked about it so much that now people are just talking about it and not really doing it. And it's like you you can't you can't fake that, that you can't do that. Like even if you do talk about it, you got to be in the motion of, in the journey of doing it. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, my thing is, when the lights, cameras, actions, everything off, you're depressed, you're unhappy, you're alone, mm -hmm. you're hurting, you're going through things, you're crying, you're miserable. So it's like, then you have to be on here to find a happy place. It's like, come on, you got to really sit there and truly do the work. And you may not want to do the work. It's times that I don't always want to talk to my therapist Sundays at 730. But guess what? She called yeah. and if she see I'm late at that on the Zoom, she like, Kwamea, where you at? Let's go. You know what I'm saying? 
So at the end of the day, I have to do it because that's something I committed to my mental, to my spirit, to my social, to my physical, my whole healing journey. And, and thank God I got a therapist that actually hold me accountable, like, where the hell you at? Because I'm on this link and you ain't pop in here yet. Right, right. <laughs> But the thing is, I understand people, everybody don't have that, but I feel like everybody can get that if they put the work into wanting to receive that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And people are afraid to heal. Oh, it I sounds silly, but I'm telling you, people they are. are afraid to heal. 95%, I'm a healing and accountability coach. 95% of my clientele, first of all, they always come in with a guard, you know. But not only is it my gift, but I have the gift of discernment, too. So I hear what they're saying, but I'm like... They're not giving you that full... They're not... You can right. tell. I'm like, you ready? Because if you... if I mean, I can take your coins, and we can sit here for months. But that, I, I'm not like that. I need you to get something out of this. And in order to do that, you're going to have to take that on. Take that on. We got to get through this. But then they say, I don't know how. I don't, it's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot. And I get it, because again, in the black and brown community, don't tell my business, don't talk about what's going on here, don't you do this. These people suppress, they suppress, they suppress, they suppress. Oh, my grandma was stubborn to tell, oh, my grandma was mean to tell, this is just how I am. No, you're not. No, you're not. You were not born like that. Something happened to you yeah. throughout your life that caused that wall to go up, that guard to go up, that stubbornness to come in, that meanness to come in. Let's get to the root of it. I'm mm. not going to, if you cut your arm with a knife, what do I look like putting a band aid on me? What do you, baby, you bleed out. You gonna bleed right, we got a doctor, you up. Baby, we need to clean that, put some stitches on it. You, you know, and people don't want to do, I'm going to slap that band-aid. Like she was talking about her sweeping under the rug. I'm, I'm going to put a band-aid on it. But you need stitches. Mm-hmm. But mm -hmm. surgery. Mm -hmm. We need to go in and get that thing. What you talking about a band-aid? Mm -hmm. People don't want to do that. It's like, no, I don't want to talk about that. Oh, it's nothing I can do. Don't bring that up. Yes, y'all still have to come up. And I and I definitely know that people are scared to heal because one of my one of my oldest brothers, um, me and him was having a deep conversation, which you know every now and then we do, and he was like, "Qua, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm scared to go there because I one I don't know what's gonna come up or two and two, it's a lot." He says, "So I'm even afraid to even open up that that wall yeah. and." Re or either open that door and allow all that to come out because he said, I'm really scared. Yeah. And I said, you're scared, but however, so you want to continue to walk around here with all these suppressed emotions, feelings, and things that you're holding in, and then you react to something because of something, in a trauma, a trigger mm -hmm. in your past, and it's like, you you walk in a billboard, you being a walking billboard of your triggers, your traumas. Mm -hmm. So say then I can I tell them because I say when you see when you when somebody says something you they um may trigger you, somebody do something that may trigger you, they gonna be like, Why whoa, 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 like what it like what you coming from? Even though you don't mean it, but then you do mean it because you're reacting because of your trauma, because they triggered you in some type of way with suppressed down in you. And I'm like, it's just so crazy because me and him do have these talks and I'm like, and he hate when I say this. I say, I feel like you still have unresolved issues with our father. He probably, and he probably not, doesn't want to go there. He probably want to go there. He's not. He have unresolved issues with, unres unresolved issues with our father. He have unresolved issues with his mother. He have a lot of just, and I understand this, me being a boy mom and my, my son is a young man now, me being a, me a, a, a mom of a boy, it got me to that biological um, anatomy of the boy, a man's heart, because people would think back then, Men's not supposed to cry. They, they, they tough. They, you know, take it on the chin, take it on the shoulder, keep pushing. But it's like, why are we doing that to them when we support, we pacifying our girls, but we shoving our boys to telling them, oh, fuck that, keep going. 
Don't worry about that. You bet not cry. When it's like, they got the same heart and blood pumping as the girls do, but we care more about the girl heart and emotions and not them. And then we wonder why our men and our young men is out here acting a fucking fool and we sit and say, what's wrong with them? Want to know what's wrong with them? They got suppressed trauma trigger issues that they are scared because someone told them not to share. Someone told them they bet not cry because someone told them to, to um, swallow that shit and keep it pushing. So now deep down the side, it's hurting them. And that's why they now react it out. Because I tell a person, a child don't, don't catch a temper tantrum or act out for no reason. There's mm -hmm. always a reason a person act out. You have to find out what is that reason. There's some hurt. There's some pain. There's some struggle with it. And that just made me really confused. And I understand our black and brown community is scared of healing, but why do we still want to... I, I just... I don't know. Why, why still... Why still... I just... I didn't hear the end of the question. You said, why what? Why still choose to sit in that and be in it and then hold up? This is our thing, too. That word stubborn, I told my mother and I told my fathers, yes, because I have a father and uh, two stepfathers, and I told them, I said, I don't care how old y'all get, you better not ever say that word to me. Because let me tell you, so as long as you got breath in your body, there's no such thing of you being stubborn or stuck in your ways because you're still able, body, sound, and mind, to grow and elevate until you go into your grave. That's true. And I, I think that's a I think that's a lazy ass excuse for a lot of black and brown people. Are you stuck in your ways or either um you you know how they are like uh -uh, no uh uh. It's like they and stubborn. They just don't want to change. Like that's your excuse. Like I, that's just their excuse for I just don't want to do it. I'm stubborn. Correct. That's just that's just how I am. Oh, my mom was like this. My father was mm -hmm. like this. That's mm -hmm. then that's a generational curse that you need to break. That's exactly <laughs> what it what is. What are you talking about? You need to and work again, on that. Even with that, rooted in fear because it's like I don't want to be different. I don't want to be the person that. I'm telling you, you'll be surprised how much of this stuff is rooted in a fear. Of mm -hmm. just the unknown, I you know what is going to happen if I decide I don't want to be like that. What if I don't want to be like that? And to say this is just how I am is to say that there's no more to you. So is that it? If this is just how you are, there's nothing more. Is they don't even understand the stuff that they're coming into company with. You agreeing with that statement saying there's nothing more here. There's nothing more to me. This is just how I am. This mm. is it. Mm -hmm. And people wear that. You limit life. yourself. Give it or take. Take it or leave it. <laughs> that's, that's it. Okay, cool. If that's all that you are, then cool. But and the reality I, is, I, they've been spiteful. I really stay away from for people like that because. Just like um, you say, that's limited, limiting yourself, limited yourself, and that's basically putting a limit on yourself, saying that this is your cap, this is all you could receive, this is all you could grow, this is all that you could do. It is no extension of you, yeah. and I just don't like to be around people like that, and I don't like to talk to people like that because my thing is, say if I say something in an elevation higher level past their limit. And looking at me like, oh, she crazy. She's a fool. What you talking about? So you're not knowing what you talk about to me, Willis. To me, like you ain't gonna do that. Like it's no way. So it's like you, you. I just can't have conversations with those type of people because they put a limit on themselves, saying that this is all to them. I'm set in my ways. I'm stubborn. And then even a generational thing when you say that, oh, because my mama, Ellen, I'm my mother. I'm my mother's 2.0. I'm a spin image of my mama. But one thing I can say is that I don't ever want to take on my mama's traumas, triggers, or what she been through, went through, or if she chose today that she going to stop and have a limit to herself. And I feel like now I can be a proud daughter to say because of my healing, because of my growth and my elevation and the things that she see me doing, it's giving her the motivation to keep going, to elevate, to to heal, to 
to take that journey and to go and say, there's so much more to, of, of me and to me. And, mm -hmm. and I'm glad that she's doing that because my mother did used to say that. She used to be like, oh, you, you know how your mommy is or you know how ma is, you know, and I'm like, no, how mom is because if you're trying to tell me that this is the limit to you, then guess what? Good night. You won't see me. <laughs> Listen, like, I, like you said, you don't want to be nothing like how your mom's traumas was, what she went through. Like, I have to start to notice that when I start going through different things with men, I'm like, wait, my mom told me a story about this before, or she went through this, this same situation with one of her boyfriends that she was dating, and you see that and start to trickle down to you. I said, oh, no, no, no. I'm not going through that. I'm going to be the change. I'm going to handle mm -hmm. myself differently. What can I do to handle myself differently? Even if I have to seek out other advice from other people because my mom still may not know the answer. I'm going to go get help. I'm going to get that mm -hmm. coaching from a woman that's been through things like that and is able to tell me how to do things and how to overcome and how to heal through things, even if my mom can't do it. Like, oh, my mom, she didn't get through it or she was stuck like this. So, I mean, I guess that's just how it's going to be. No, it's not. That's not how it has to be. You can go and get help. You can heal from those traumas. You can break those generational curses. You can get through this, but you have to be willing. You cannot be stubborn. You cannot be stuck in your ways. You have to have that, you know what? I'm going to be the change. And that's right. how I felt. Like, especially coming from my mom and from my, my father, they're both not married. They're both, they both been through things with different partners in their life. But I said, I'm going to be the change. I don't want to be like that. I want to learn how to be a wife. I want to mm -hmm. learn how to cater to a man. I want to mm -hmm. learn how to do because I didn't see that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to learn that so I can be that. And yeah. wonder why, like, I don't want to go through those same traumas. And even when you said the suppressing emotions, my brother, when I remember when I was a little girl and he would get in trouble, my brother um, would get in trouble with the law a lot. And I would, with the moment I started to show emotion or even start to cry, like, oh, you know, my brother, he's incarcerated. That has an effect on me. I'm your little sister. You know, mm -hmm. so when I would start to feel away, sis, stop, don't cry, don't do mm -hmm. that, don't cry for me, don't do that. So I thought I had to be strong. I yeah. always had to be strong. And so that affected other areas in my life. Like, oh, I can't cry. I don't want nobody to see me cry. I felt weak. I'm a woman. We're, we're sensitive. We're known to be sensitive. But I had to be able to show that. I'm trying yeah. to be hard walking around here like my brother. I am not no man. I am a woman. Right. Even I I'm a woman. I'm a soft creature. Men not supposed to do that either. They but. not. They're really not. So he's teaching me the wrong thing. Like, sis, don't cry. Hold it in. You got this. You strong. Like, no, you're saying that because you don't want nobody to feel emotion for you because you're going to feel bad about your situation. That's mm -hmm. what I had to realize. Mm -hmm. And I said, I can't mm -hmm. do that no more. I had to break down because that was causing issues with me. Instead of crying, anger was lashing out. Mm -hmm. So when you let those tears flow, you let those rivers flow, you heal. You begin to heal. Yeah. You begin to tell your situation and your story to somebody else and you can heal and help somebody else heal that may be going through the same thing. Absolutely. You have to talk about it. Yeah. And people, I know people are like, have all these thoughts and feelings about the Bible, all that good stuff, that's between them and the Lord. But I'm telling you, I have this stuff in the Bible. Life and death is in your mouth. What yes. you speak is what it is. And so often we speak death, but it's also because of how we were raised, word curses spoke over our life that we came in covenant with. How many times are our parents calling us lazy? Oh, girl, all you do is talk on the phone. Oh, you just like your daddy. And we come in and covenant with these things because we like, okay, that stuff starts to seep in. And then we get old, we're older. It's kind of like, damn, you know, you, you're thinking about all the things you partner with. For the longest, because I was honest, People was calling me mean. I've been getting called mean for a, a, at a pretty young age. Mm -hmm. And it got to the point that I was rising to the occasion. I almost thought life was easier to just be mean. Okay, cool. Well, then leave me alone. Don't ask me anything. Don't, you know, whatever. But literally, growing up and getting in my 30s, I was so, I'm like, wait, am I really mean? Because I heard it that much. And so as I began my journey in healing and all that good and finding God and stuff, I was like, I had to think, what was going on when people were calling me that? I had to put instances in my mind. Was I genuinely being mean or was I being 
honest. And when I counted up the calls, 99% of the time, I was being honest. And people didn't, they had to label me to shut me up. It was like, mm -hmm. she's mean. Oh my God, you talk. And I'm like, I literally had to think about it. Because you don't ever want to get too up here where you don't take that into your heart and take it into consideration. Too prideful. So I had to ask myself, okay, Angel, are you being mean? Are you being mean? Or is the, and every time, it, almost 90% of the scenarios, I was not, I was being honest. Yeah. And that person wasn't ready. So it was like, oh my God, that's so mean. That was the label they put on me because mm -hmm. they couldn't handle what was happening. So I'm just like, no, I'm not going to be watering myself down because you're not ready. And that's just not cool. And that happened in childhood. I remember being seven years old. This is a true story. Seven years old. And it was open house. I don't know if y'all have open houses where y'all where the parents come and meet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now this is a long time ago because I'm in my forties. But anyway, I still remember the story. So I was excited. I don't know. My mom was doing my open house. Like I had to do this picture. And Joseph was like, draw a picture of your family, your home. You know, we was great. We had money. But I had a two-story. I'm ready. I'm drawing this whole house. I'm letting the people know. So I'm drawing the house, drawing the bedrooms or whatever. Um, but my mother used to sleep on the couch. She did not sleep with my father. I'm mm. a seven-year-old child. I'm drawing what I see. Yeah. I'm, I'm not faking it till I make it. I'm not pretending. I'm honest. I'm a child. So I'm all happy. My mama come in and I'm like, mama, come see my dad. I'm excited, baby. But my mama was good to this kid. She was stepping in and I was like, what? And so her mood changed. And I was just mm. like, I don't know what's happening, you know. Baby got in that car that woman to cut me blind. Mm. And I was just like, what did I do? I don't get what I did. So that was a thing. So this is one of those things where people don't understand the damage that they're doing. So that story might sound really small to some people, like, what was the big deal? You got pissed off control. But I was being honest. And in that moment, mm -hmm. somebody was telling me I should have lied or I should not have done this thing. So right then and there, here comes this spirit of lying. Because what you think happened after that? Oh, okay, I'm going to start lying about little things. Da, 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 da. Then it's spiral out of control. Then when I'm alive, 15, 60 year old kids at school, where all this lying comes from? Huh, I wonder. I wonder where this got created. You made me afraid to tell the truth. Right. But the crazy, I'm saying all this to say, that was such a thing for me that it, it, it did damage because my gift was in my mouth. And yeah. she started taking that from me at an early age. So when I got late 30s, I was going to say 38 years old, I, I went to my mother because I had mother issues. I had a, emotional abandonment, emotional rejection issues. I went to her and I said, you know, I never saw myself as a person with mommy issues because I knew how to deal with you. I knew how to mm -hmm. cut you off when I didn't want to talk to you. I knew how to maneuver around you. But that's not healing. That's not, I'm, not, I'm just choosing not to deal with you and there's no healing in that. I have to be able to be around you and know that my heart is healed. I said, but I have to talk to you. And she looked dead at me. She said, Angel, I knew that I lost you, but I didn't know when. She said, can you tell me when? And I said, seven years old, when I drew you sleeping on that couch and you cussed me out. And so I'm a 38-year-old at that time. So my mom was sitting here like, oh. like, you mean to tell me this one, that thing triggered, you know, the things that happened after that? And I said, yes. My mother cried. And what she told me changed everything for me. Mm. She said, Angel, you exposed me. And I was not ready. Mm. I was not ready to deal with that. And you exposed my home. You exposed that my marriage was not basically what I said it was. Yeah. I was not ready. And I was yeah. like, wow. So 31 years of a grudge, unforgiveness, was based on the fact that it wasn't even about me. It was about her. Uh, mm -hmm, she yeah. wasn't ready. 
And that put me in a box for a long time. So when I started coming out, she still wasn't ready. But now I'm 38 years old. I wrote that first book. I was 38. I'm like, oh, well, it's coming now. If you didn't have 31 years to get yourself together. But okay. baby, what Angel won't do is be 69 years old. You won't get another 31 years. Get yeah. something out. So mm-hmm. when I did it again, it wasn't to expose or embarrass. That was freedom. It was yeah. time to come out of it. I had to forgive her and I had to move on. Yeah. So we have to be careful about what, what the, the things we're saying to people, the names we're calling people. Um, we speak curse. That's word curses that we can speak over people because we're not in the right place. You do better just saying nothing. But watch our word have power. We yeah. can spelling. We can kill a <laughs> destiny. We can kill. Literally, we can kill things with our mouth. We have to choose. Am I going to build you up? I'm going to tear you down. So our words are powerful. And so it, I was called mean that whole time and throughout most of my life for being honest. I wasn't a mean person. But it literally yeah. made me believe that I was. Words have power. You had people yeah. around you that weren't ready for those truths. People were hiding behind a, a, a facade like, oh, oh, I can't. Oh, oh, you know. You have to speak the truth. And when people aren't ready, they're going to call you out. They're going to say, oh, you're being mean. No, you're not ready. You're not ready to dig into what I just touched. Mm-hmm. You're not ready for that. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But you can't you can't water yourself down or hide your honesty to make other people comfortable. You have yeah. to speak. The truth is uncomfortable. They said truth hurts. Mm-hmm. Right? But it will set you free. After you done, you know, wow. did that self-work and healed, you feel so free. You feel that burden lifted up off of you. But when you're not ready, it's seen. It hurt. You're not mm-hmm. ready for that. You don't want to dig into those problems. But you have to. You got to go through it. You have to go through it and grow through it and come out mm-hmm. on the other side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Listen, that's the best thing. That is the best thing that we could end it on right there. Because I'm telling you, that was a message for whoever needed to hear it, whoever mm-hmm. needed to feel it, and whoever it needed to actually move. So you ladies, tell people where they can find you, what you got coming up, what you got going on. Um, You know, just plug yourself in. Okay. Well, um, right now, I do have some episodes that I just released um, on my podcast, so you guys can go check those out. You can find me right here at Quantity Radio. Um, I have the link in my bio to listen to it on your favorite platform. I'm definitely putting in some work, so it's going to be some more stuff coming soon, some good podcasts and topics coming soon y'all got me feeling bad i need to get i need to get more involved in my social media i really don't i don't be on here like that man i'm like i need to um i need to get more involved i, I i'm more on my um the real angel and the boy facebook page more than anything but i, I tell myself all the time i need to get more involved on the social media side um i'm just so personal I like that one-on-one stuff. I like to do that stuff. So I forget to come here. It's a, it's a many of people that need to be reached, um, you know, and stuff like that. So I, I am on, on social media. I do use my Facebook page more than my IG at The Real Angel M. Savoy. Um, like I said, the latest thing that I just did, I just launched the book, From the Shallow to the Deep. It's on my website, angelmsavoy.com. Um, I do a prayer call every Friday on Facebook Live, and it's a private group um, called From Hidden to Healed, because um, uh, that's just where people are. They are in hiding, and I want them to be healed. I want them to know that they can come out. So that's the latest thing that I have been doing and working on. I host retreats um, quarterly where I get complete strangers in a house that aren't willing to admit that they need work. They need stuff to do. We are in the house four days, three nights. We are doing some intensive stuff. You might not like me for a couple of days, but when you leave, you're going to love me. I need you to heal, be whole, and go out and fulfill your purpose. Um, so those are a bit of the things that I'm working on um, at this time. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yes, yes. And of course, you guys already know where you can find me on all social media platforms, Pillow Talk with the T podcast or either Pillow Talk with the T pod um, or either Pillow Talk with the T. Not only that, you got know you can find me here every Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Check your local time zone. Um, 
with an incredible guest, special guest, great topics, great conversation. You can also go subscribe to my YouTube channel as well as go listen to me on all streaming podcasts, all podcast streaming platforms. Um, then also, um, if you guys in the New York, New Jersey area, come out this Saturday. I have my first, first um, Empower Her Tribe Nation and Women Empowerment event Saturday, May 21st at 2.30 p.m. Yes. Um, come through. You could either pay at the door or you could end up getting your tickets at Eventbrite. The link is in my bio. We are going to have an amazing empowerment event. It's going to be something epic that never been done before and I'm telling you it's going to be epic. Um, so, but other than that, you ladies have an amazing night. I appreciate you guys for coming on support. Thank you. Keeping your word, keeping your commitment. <laughs> yes, yes. We being about it tonight. We will be and out. being about it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk about it, but being about it, period, okay. all day. So thank you guys so much. And you guys, I'll see you next week. Other than that, you guys have an incredible, amazing weekend. Love you. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye.